uh, and the other two men attacked uh, Andy. Where were you as they as they came out to attack? I seem to remember that I was uh, much farther to the right on the square, and I was trying to zoom in on the license plate of the guy who was getting in his car. So I didn't become aware that there was any other confrontation going on until I saw the back fat fly. I, I saw that there was a, an African American gentleman over there talking to Mariah, but I couldn't hear them. And so I wasn't really aware that there was a fight brewing until uh, I saw his backpack fly and I thought, well, I'm gonna censor what I thought. I thought, holy shoot, um, <laughs> something's going on over there that I've got, you know, there's, there's an attack going on over there and I've gotta go lend, uh, lend some defense. And I can tell you if I had been aware that Terry was over there threatening to have Mariah raped, you would have seen me on the video because I would have gotten up right up next to her. I was unaware that that was going on. Uh, once you realized that there was something going on, you would see the backpack fly, what did you do? Um, I had leaned the monopod up against a light post uh, earlier so that I could have one hand for the camera and also I was trying to send text messages at the same time. Um, and so I went back to by the light post. I deposited the camera and phone there uh, because I didn't have time to deal with them. I picked up the monopod and I proceeded toward the battle. And why did you do that? Well, because I didn't want to see any more violence occur. I mean, I, that, we're not out there to do violence. That's not our purpose. That's not our place. We're not out there to make enemies. We're out there to make friends. Um, and as, uh, were you holding the object in your hand on the square? Um, was I holding the object? Uh, I was holding it as soon as I put down my camera and, uh, and phone, or Garrett's camera and my phone, and, and picked it up. I did hold it after that. Why were you, why were you, why were you displaying that? I, I wanted to assert that nobody was going to get past me, a hundred people with me. Uh, and was anybody, did, did the violent encounter end when you stood there? Uh, yeah, I basically did. The, uh, the fact that I had that stick distracted the attention of the perpetrators away from the victim and to the Good Samaritan. Uh, did, did you advance on anybody in a threatening manner? No. Uh, did you swing that uh, stick in any way? I did not. Uh, was your purpose to, in holding that object to use it as a shield or a sword? Um, I would say it was much closer to a sword. I, I mean, I, I would have struck a blow if I had been, you know, if they had gotten to the point where somebody was, where it was imminently, absolutely necessary, but that's not what I wanted to do. You, you said that you, it was much closer to being used as a sword, is that what you said? Or I would say much closer to a shield, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought that was what your meaning was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, I want to address, there are other probation violations. Yes. Um, and you're wearing a shirt that, that supports marijuana, yes? Uh, yeah. The, uh, you, you described yourself as a marijuana activist. Uh, I am. Uh, from the time that you were released from the Cheshire County House of Corrections in December of last year until you were arrested in June, did you consume marijuana? I did. Uh, were you truthful with your probation officer about your use of marijuana? I was. Uh, did you, uh, in fact, provide, provide uh, urine samples that tested positive for marijuana metabolite? Yes. Uh, since uh, you were released from the House of Corrections about two weeks ago, have you also seen your probation officer? I have. Uh, have you provided urine samples to them? I have. Uh, were those tests positive or negative? They were negative. Have you consumed marijuana since you were released from the House of Corrections about two weeks ago? Uh, yes. Uh, the, uh, uh, why do you consume marijuana? I consume marijuana for a number of reasons. Um, partially it is medicinal. Um, I suffer from depression, from anxiety, and from post-traumatic stress disorder from the death of my wife. 
and uh, we were not, for the record, legally married. Um, so um, that's one of the reasons. I also consume uh, marijuana uh, because I am a marijuana activist. You said that you consume it because of depression. Have you been diagnosed with depression? Um, I have been prescribed antidepressants in the past. Um, have, um, have you ever been in a state that allowed prescription marijuana where you saw a prescription? Uh, I have not. Um, well, the one state that I've been in that allowed marijuana was New Hampshire, but yet the, uh, the prescriptions apparently are made of unobtainium because you can't get one. Uh, the, does uh, the consumption of marijuana uh, relieve your depression? It does. Uh, does when you are not consuming marijuana, does that significantly interfere with your daily activities? Um, it interferes with them. I find that I'm not my lovable self when I'm uh, when I'm not consuming marijuana. I tend to be more irritable, more anxious. Um, I tend to not interact with people as well socially. And this was true also when I was attending. Uh, AA for, for years between the death of my wife and the commencement of my smoking marijuana in 2002. I gave AA the good college shot from my 15th year in AA to my 22nd year in AA. I was miserable. And when I decided to, to start smoking weed again, what I really thought was going to happen was that my life would go into a tailspin and then I'd be able to go back to AA with you know, this new lease on life that happens when you first get sober. The problem is it didn't work out that way. The tailspin didn't come. All of a sudden, I start smoking weed, and I'm able to find a woman that wants to date me for the first time since Julie died, because I'm not just all the time, you know, or, or, or just sad all the time. And people can actually see who I am when I smoke weed. And I like me better when I smoke weed. Uh, is it therapeutic? Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Paul, uh, in the recent past, have you been offered uh, jobs? As uh, a program? Yes, if you count the one that came, that I haven't told you about, that came today, uh, I've been offered three jobs programming them. Uh, can you tell the court where those, uh, where the location of those jobs are? Um, let's see, one in Keene and a shortish contract, one in Grafton, which is a shortish contract, and then I've also been offered a long-term contract in Maine. Uh, and uh, why have you not accepted uh, the, the contract in Maine, or the, the job in Maine? Um, when you hire a computer programmer, it's, it's kind of like hiring a lawyer. You don't hire him if you think he's going to become unavailable partway through your case because replacing him is nearly impossible. So although this particular person who runs a medical marijuana dispensary probably would have hired me and taken the risk, I did not feel comfortable taking a job where I might have to say to the client any week, I'm sorry, my, uh, my probation officer has decided that, you know, this is too many, uh, well, basically, I, I'm sorry, my probation's been violated, and I can't come to work anymore. You're going to have to find somebody else to finish the job. I, I should have laid a little bit better background for you. Are, are you trained as a computer programmer? Uh, yes. Have, have you uh, practiced that as a profession for, for a number of years in the past? Uh, yes, I have, about 15 years. what they were asking for was an evaluation 
it says, uh, I believe it says on the sheet, treatment. And I, I mean, if you want, you can probably qualify me as an expert witness on chemical dependency, abuse, and recovery. I'm not trying to get there. But um, I, uh, I know that if you're going through chemical dependency treatment, that in order to successfully complete that, you have to say, yes, I'm addicted to my drug of choice. Well, for one thing, marijuana isn't addictive, and I'm not going to claim to be a marijuana addict any more than I would claim to be a unicorn. Uh, beyond that, um, you know, to say that, that I was a marijuana addict when I've been making the argument for years that marijuana should be legalized, and one of the reasons I give for that is that it's not addictive, would, would force me to betray everything that I've done up to this point, and I've put my life into my activism. I mean, you can't say I'm not dedicated to my cause. I've gone to jail for it. I've moved from a middle-class existence to barely scraping by as an activist for it. Mr. Pollock, just a, a few basic things. Uh, are you able to feed yourself on a daily basis, provide for your own food? Yes. Uh, are you available to put clothes on your back? Yes. A roof over your head? Indeed. Do you maintain uh, reasonable 